Hello everyone. Um, decided to try a different uh, uh, camera here this time. Uh, hopefully the sound's better. Made a few tests and it seemed it was uh, a lot better than the uh, webcam I was using before. This time I'm just using a tablet with the free app. Um, all my other videos have been about uh, maps, creating them, uh, crafting the tiles. So I pretty much explored everything I could give you on that. Uh, the only other thing I could really do would be the um, homebrew races that I like to have a lot of fun with. Um, so I'll be making a lot of videos detailing those. Uh, you'll see future updates with uh, minotaurs, uh, slimes, myconids, and um, just a lot of different stuff. So, uh, stay tuned for that. Swaggin, Grinny Low. But what I'm going to uh, feature today is the uh, Gearsmen of Numeria. They're uh, a robot uh, construct with the uh, robot subtype. And they're about medium size. One of the uh, creations or artifacts or um, those that are still left from the uh, Silver Mount. And uh, one that the Technic League uh, employs to uh, great use, the Gearsmen. Uh, commonly known as shock troopers or guards performing all kinds of uh, tasks. Um, unlike Eberron's uh, Warforged. Um, these ones have a detachment and a sort of logical efficiency. They're normally accompanied by uh, endless silence from them. Um, they do seem to have some sort of uh, orders that are not known to anyone really. Uh, sometimes they can contradict um, what the Technic League may, may uh, task them with. Some sort of maybe mysterious uh, internal directives. So you can, you know, perhaps a couple or uh, the one particular you're going to play as a uh, player character might uh, go off on its own following this directive it has set up within itself, within its matrices and uh, unbeknownst to the Technic League it goes off on its own um, from wherever it came from up in the sky its purpose is now clear um, or maybe it's kind of uh, evolved from its reasoning or sort of whatever sort of uh, Direct, uh, directives it was given now it's operating on its own so what I did um, there's no stats for them yet I imagine Pathfinder will put out some stuff but I use the um, advanced race guide to use all of my uh, sort of mechanics from here just as a uh, sort of frame or base for these Kind of helps me not kind of, kind of go too much into the overpowered realm. You know, you'll start to see some of these are going to be around 30 RP, you know, 20 R RP points. These are uh, racial points that the uh, book goes, goes into. But to kind of get with the class, I should say the race, um, the Gearsmen. Of course, they're a construct, and given that they're a construct, um, it's 20 racial points. They don't have a constitution score. Uh, they get the low light vision racial trait and dark vision racial trait without any costs due to the uh, type that they are, immune to all mind effect and effects. They cannot heal damage on their own. But perhaps with a make hole, 
spell or a similar ability that can be healed. Uh, not subject to ability damage, ability drain, fatigue, exhaustion, energy drain, non-lethal damage. Uh, immune to effect that requires a fortitude save unless it works on objects or is harmless. Not risk due to massive damage. But they are immediately destroyed when they are reduced to zero hit points or fewer. So resurrections and raises won't work on these, unlike uh, the Warforged. And looks like based on their size, they can get bonus hit points if they're medium size. They would get uh, 20 hit points to start with, which would kind of help, being that uh, they're going to take some damage and uh, be a little bit longer in a time when they can heal. So that's just kind of what we're dealing with with just the uh, racial qualities of that type. So already I started off with Gearsman type construct with 20 uh, points on that. Their size is going to be medium. Uh, their stats in the um, inner sea bestiary uh, showed them as medium. I haven't encountered or read anything about larger sizes or sm uh, smaller sizes uh, with a cer certain purpose to conduct a certain task based on those sizes. Uh, their base speed, I saw in there, they're 20 feet, so I'm pulling it to slow. Um, which takes off one point. And as far as the ability scores, I went with um, weakness. Where uh, you get a plus 2 strength, plus 2 to wisdom, and minus 4 to charisma. Just looking at uh, their stats right here, their CR4. They have a really high strength. Dexterity is pretty good, no con score of course, intelligence is average, wisdom is okay, and charisma is horrible. So I went with the uh, minus four on that. If you want you can kind of make it worse, <laughs> but normally with player character race you probably don't want to do that. So I just went with the weakness type for the uh, Ability score modifier, which also gives them another negative point, kind of reducing that 20 point cost down so far. Um, language is standard. It shows on here that they can speak, uh, uh, let's see here, common or Hallet. I'm not familiar with that one, but I guess the Numerian land, that might be uh, something that they speak there. Um, as far as the racial traits, Going into the offensive section, uh, elemental weapons, since uh, they can generate electricity, and when they do that, they can charge it into the uh, weapons that they wield. So one d six points of electricity damage on a hit. So they can charge your weapons. Uh, it doesn't take any time to do so. It just uh, happens right away. So I added the elemental weapons from the advanced race guide on page 236, and that's uh, six point cost. Uh, they have weapon famili familiarity, uh, all simple weapons. I just gave them two points for that. Senses, the dark vision and the low light are marked on here, but there's no uh, valued cost for that. It just comes with the uh, type of race. Uh, weaknesses, their elemental vulnerability, they are indeed vulnerable to uh, electricity, as which is kind of uh, comes with the whole being of a robot and such, having that uh, initial weakness to such, given the uh, makeup of its uh, body. So also critical hit vulnerability and with those basically with the vulnerable uh, vulnerable to electricity they would take 150% as much damage from normal electricity attacks and vulnerable to critical hits so whenever they take extra damage from a critical hit 
They have to make a DC 15 fortitude save to avoid being stunned for one round. If it makes a successful saving throw, it is staggered for one round. And the robot remains immune to other sources of the stun condition. So that's one key point there for the uh, critical hits. And getting towards the bottom of the list here. Um, magical racial traits in the inner sea bestiary. Um, where is that? Here we go. They have this ability known as self repair. They can use their nanites to heal themselves of damage at a rate of a number of hit points per hour equal to their hit dice. Um, since it's a CR4, it's four hit points per hour for most gearsmen. Uh, up to once per day, as a full round action, it can heal any robot it touches with uh, 46 points of damage. If a gearsman uses this ability on itself, it automatically heals the maximum amount of those 46 dice, which would be 20 po 24 points of damage. So, looks like you can uh, generate the healing through your nanites. And then uh, also once per day is a full round action. You can uh, deliver the maximum amount to yourself or to uh, another robot in turn. Uh, this I didn't find in the uh, advanced race guide, so what I did was I just kind of homebrewed that option there and uh, gave that seven racial points. Uh, just since there was a couple different unique features that it would do, um, it wasn't a one use or it was kind of went beyond the scope of a once a day since you could do two different things there. Uh, I think this is the self repair I think is probably uh, some you're definitely going to want if you do play a Gearsman. Um, I wouldn't take it off just because uh, healing on its own is already difficult and uh, with the self repair um, it will help out quite a bit so that there's not a lot of stress with the uh, clerics, oracles, or additional class healers. So I kind of like that. You kind of move away from the whole Warforge sort of aspect moving into Pathfinder. So cause I kind of want to keep this kind of gal Galarian sort of uh, themed. Uh, it's kind of what I'm going to do with all the uh, races that that, uh, that I make. Um, so the feet and skill racial traits. Uh, skill training. They are um, craft and profession or class skills for them. Based on their uh, race. So that's one point there. They're skilled. So they uh, get additional skill points. Every time they level. Kind of like uh, humans. So I gave that four points, as it is uh, listed in the book. Um, except theirs, I think it's two. So I gave it an extra set, so the four total rather than just two. And adaptive learning. Uh, this is a homebrew one that I added on here, just because uh, it's not really um, anywhere in the uh, book for the uh, race guide. And with the adaptive learning, basically, um, you have a number of bonus rank skill ranks that you are, that are equal to your hit dice um, that you can reprogram those to apply to any skill. These ranks cannot be split among multiple skills, and that's all apply to one skill. Um, a Gearsman may change what skill these bonus ranks apply to up to once per day by concentrating for one minute, during which time they can take no other actions. Uh, rather than spend these bonus ranks on a skill, a Gearsman can choose to devote them to weapon knowledge, gaining proficiency with a single weapon instead of bonus ranks in a skill. So. 
that's quite a unique feature. Once again, kind of moving away from the Warforged aspect, more of the kind of uh, trying not to have Eberron kind of uh, plague the uh, Galarian world there. So uh, I gave that six racial points. So pretty much those are just the three homebrews that I added to that, but basically just trying to go on off the um, bestiary stats and incorporating those with the race guide. So, if you guys out there were curious about that, uh, I hope this helped. Perhaps maybe saved you some time with kind of uh, trying to break down the uh, stats and kind of uh, build them up into a pl player character style. Um, the total RP cost for this is 40 points. So, you'll notice it's uh, pretty high. Um, just one shy, I think, of a Dro Noble, so, um, I don't know if you allow, you know, Dro uh, Nobles in your campaign or not, but, um, they are pretty powerful, so that's kind of already is an indication that, uh, this is a, uh, powerful race, uh, before you even go into the, the classes, but, um, you may want to have a campaign where, you know, um, just like with, like, uh, you know, guns and such, where they are immersion, if you happen to have a gunslinger, you know, you also can have that choice with that to decide if there's going to be immersion science in your uh, campaign, um, just like with the immersion guns. So, um, as far as... Anything else um, with that? Any of the things I, I've talked about, you can, if you want, you can take one or two off and try to add that as an additional uh, racial feature that you can uh, swap out. If they want to have one choice or the other, so alternate racial traits that they can pick. Um, if you want to kind of embrace this sort of science aspect to even more, um, and have the Numerian technology uh, have more of an impact on your game. Um, you can go with things like um, force fields. Maybe you decide to make like a shield or magic item or something, or I should say a scientific item, to where um, a thin layer of shimmer and ener energy uh, grants a number of bonus hit points. Um, all damage dealt to a robot with an active force field is reduced from these hit points. The robot would be immune to critical hits with this force field being active. Um, once the hit points are reduced to zero, the force field shuts down and cannot be reactivated for 24 hours. So that's something uh, of a neat sort of feature you can do. Um, integrated weaponry, um, as what is kind of, uh, seen with the, uh, Annihilator robot. Um, you can choose to maybe incorporate some of that into your Gearsman, uh, of Numeria. Some sort of techno technological weapon, um, uh, such as a laser rifle or a chain gun built into its body, perhaps maybe one of its arms has this, so they don't have the use of a hand there, but they have this weapon built into it, which kind of treats it as a uh, natural attack, or um, and as far as what kind of damage code you want to do for it, uh, <laughs> it sounds quite lethal because it is like, you know, a chain gun, but uh, maybe it's a one a day feature, and maybe only access at a certain level, kind of like as if they would be accessing, you know, like a fireball or something, um, you can kind of do a level progr progression based on that, um, since an integrated chain gun, um, typically, typically, uh, depending on how powerful it is, you know, it could be anywhere between 8d6 damage, 4d6 damage, so you can kind of, uh, level progress that, and then with a uh, uh, 
critical multiplier of uh, times four on that. So, um, as far as maybe a plasma part, and not so much of a um, chain gun, more of a laser rifle. Um, just kind of looking at that annihilator robot. Um, I already see that you can uh, use something like a pla plasma lance. Um, looks a lot more powerful though. Um, so this may be something uh, level progress maybe for further along. So similar to like a uh, light uh, lightning bolt. Um, you know, it could be like 120 foot long line of plasma. Um, that's just how powerful you want to make it. That's the big thing, and the sort of the whole sort of fear of overpower comes into mind. But maybe like an 8d6 to a 12d6, depending on the le uh, level, and it being a uh, you know, of course, they would get a reflex save for that. Off, and the save would be a DC. Uh, would be intelligence based so that's something to think about um, or if you just want to go back to those chain guns uh, increment range of 200 feet you can drop that down if you want due to the recoil or the stability of the stock um, I definitely wouldn't do the automatic reload as a free action um, you can even try to use some of the, uh, gunsmithing sort of parts of the gunsling, gu uh, gunslinger class if you choose to incorporate misfires and such. Um, maybe you can process scrap metal to make new ammunition, so that might be, a sort of, a inventory feature that you can, uh, introduce with that. Um... As far as the laser weapons go, you know, they, admit, they would emit a beam of intense focus light waves that, you know, could resolve its touch attacks and deal fire damage. Um, they could pass through force fields and force effects like a wall of force without damaging that field to strike a foe beyond. Objects like glass or other transparent barriers do not provide cover from lasers but they can still take damage from the laser when it strikes, passing through it. Um, also, it says here about laser weapons that uh, visible creatures are immune to damage caused by a laser weapon. Fog, smoke, and other cloud cover provides additional concealment from laser attacks. Um, and with the plasma weapons, they would emit a burst of superheated electricity charged gas known as plasma. They would resolve as touch attacks half the damage dealt by plasma is fire damage and half is electricity damage. So that's kind of a un unique feature there, the dual elements. Um, so that's pretty much all I have on the Gearsman one. Um, if you're looking for maybe some li uh, literature on them, maybe you kind of get a more insight on them. Uh, City of the Fallen Sky, it's a Pathfinder Tales novel. Um, it features a little bit uh, of information on them. Also of Numeria and their technologies. Uh, so if you want, you can check that out. It was a pretty good read. Um, I'm slowly getting through the uh, Pathfinder Tales line and uh, enjoying quite a lot of books from there. Uh, so I will... Uh, post all these uh, stats that I just went over uh, below the uh, video there so you'll find them right down there and uh, feel free to share your uh, collective thoughts on that how overpowered it seems maybe uh, you might have a better approach to it maybe sort of trying to get it down to maybe a half construct, maybe kind of more towards the um, android type. But with this one, it's pre pretty much the Gearsman. It's uh, pretty much a set theme with Galarian. Um, just a big mechanical 
construct with a sort of a thoughtless, almost uh, cold, calculating gaze with always that ushers in this silence as it processes uh, stuff. So, um, that's all I have right now. So, uh, this is just kind of my, uh, I, I just built all this up today, spent a few hours uh, kind of go, going through it and standing it up. So, um, there may be revisions to it later on, uh, possibly uh, by you. So, uh, thank you very much for your time.